Hey guys, it's Justin again, and in this video we're going to paint all these prime parts. Alright guys, it's finally, finally time to jump into the painting video. But before we get started, let me go ahead and shout out some patrons for this month. Uh, this month we've got Andy, we've got Gil, uh, we've got SD, and we have Rex. Uh, thank you guys, as always, thank you so much for helping me out. Uh, it's, it's very much appreciated. Now for me, the first step in painting is figuring out how I'm going to paint. Uh, for this model, I'm going to be painting it by color, and because I'm painting it by color, I'm going to break the entire kit down into its parts, uh, and I'm going to put each piece that's going to be a color into its own individual bag, uh, so all the red pieces will be the red pieces, all the white pieces will be the white pieces, and then from there, uh, because I prefer to be as efficient as possible, I don't like to jump back and forth a whole lot, um, I, I decide what order I'm going to paint in. So for this model, I've decided the order is going to be red pieces, yellow pieces, blue pieces, white pieces, and then anything that needs to be masked as well as grays and metallics will come last because there's a lot of pieces on this model that have um, like little tiny details and stuff like that, that that are kind of begging to be painted that color. So we're going to do those at the end. Now let's talk about post shading, which is the technique that I'm going to be using for this build. Uh, post shading is probably my favorite shading technique that I use um, for a lot of reasons. The biggest one is is being uh, kind of when I do long term paint projects and stuff like that. It, it really it's really stressful on my hands, and I feel like post shading is a lot less stress on you. Uh, that's my personal opinion. Uh, another thing that I like about post shading is that I can lay down a full base coat of a dark color or a dark version of what I'm going to be painting on my base color. And then I can blend in my highlight and I have complete control over the opacity of that color. If I want to make my reds, for example, super intense, I just keep laying down more layers of red until I get it where I want it. And then I can kind of blend everything in um, and, you know, keep going from there. Another advantage to using the post shade technique is it's a little easier to, to do if you're not as experienced in shading. It's very difficult to do, don't get me wrong, it's not something you can pick up an airbrush the first time and do, but compared to the the process of drawing every single pre-shade line, um, it's not quite as difficult. So, something to think about. So for our first example, let's use red. For the red parts, I started using a custom mixed red base coat. I mixed some red, a little bit of purple and a tiny bit of black. I wanted a little bit more of a natural um, progression rather than, than the earthy tones that come when you use a brown as a pre-shade. Um, from here, I'm going to take a strong concentration uh, of Mr. Color 68 Red Matter. I'm going to spray it kind of on the flat panels in between panel lines, uh, in between hard edges on the model. I'm going to do my best to avoid any corners. If, if you if you hit a corner, it's not that big of a deal. Just kind of come back and try and make sure that the strongest concentration of paint is in the center of those panels. And then once the entire model has been covered, all the, all the faces of that model have been covered, you're going to pull back and you're just going to mist in that, that red and you're going to slowly build up those corners and it's going to blend those shades together and, this, and the shading is just going to look so subtle, it's going to look so great. Uh, but ultimately, um, this isn't quite the color that I was looking for. So now I'm going to take out my own custom mix of red. This is uh, it's a red, a little bit of white. Uh, I wouldn't say a 50-50, that's going to give you a little bit more of a pink, but I'd say maybe a third the amount of white that you added red. Uh, and then a little, little, little bit of gray. A light gray. I follow the exact same steps that I did on the previous red, uh, except this time I try to get a little bit closer to the center of those panels, and it kind of creates a bit of a highlight to that mid-tone, and it really kind of creates that look that I was going for to begin with.
For the yellows, I started with a 50-50 mix of Mr. Color Yellow and Mr. Color Orange, just to create a nice orangey base without it being too much of like a neon orange. Uh, and now for the yellow parts, I approached the shading just a little bit differently since most of it was just really long pieces like the V-Fin antennas and things like that. Uh, so what I did is I left the base a little bit more orange for these pieces, and then as we got towards the, the outermost edge, I applied more and more yellow towards those ends to make it so that the saturation of yellow was at the outside of those pieces. And uh, yeah, that's really all I did there. For blues, I used a base coat of SMS's blue and I shaded over with a coat of ultra blue. Again, I made sure to avoid any of the edges around panel lines and things like that. Uh, shading blue is a lot of fun to me because the colors blend so naturally. The end result always looks fantastic when you shade blue. And then for my white colors, I mixed about a 50-50 ratio of SMS blue to Mr. Color White, creating sort of a denim looking color for my base coat. Uh, any kind of lighter to mid-tone blue will be fine for your white pre-shade. Uh, you're going to lay down a full base coat of that and you're going to highlight again the same way. Uh, I used Tamiya X2 White with a drop of blue in it, just a drop. Um, and again, avoid those lines the best you can. Lastly, for my gray parts, depending on how you look at this, I may have cheated a little bit, but uh, I went ahead and laid down a second layer of primer. This time I laid down black primer, uh, and then I took a good mix of white and black paint. I kind of use my, uh, my personal preference on this as you should. Find a nice gray that you like, just kind of mix the black and white until you get what you want. Uh, and I sprayed that the same way over all of the exposed frame details and things like that. Um, anything that's remaining will be masked off and sprayed in either grays or metallic colors or whatever they kind of call for just to add a little bit of variety in what I'm doing. Uh, if you're interested in how I spray metallic colors, please check out my video on painting frames. I'll go ahead and link that in the top right hand corner of this video right now. Uh, and that's all I got this time, guys. If you like this video, I appreciate it if you drop a like and subscribe or if you share this video with your friends. Uh, if you want to support this channel further, there's a t-shirt store and my Patreon page linked down below in the description. Proceeds from these will all go towards improving the channel and improving the content that I create. Uh, patrons are going to get videos about a week in advance as well as other tiered content, so consider checking that out. Uh, thank you guys so much for your time. It means a lot to me, and uh, I'll see you guys all with the next video. Later.